This is a dwarven mine. Barazin Ku is, <coughs> is its name. The question is how to make it fast. I used this dwarven terrain set in my last video, which if you haven't seen already, was a sort of stop motion short film called The Doomed Company. And this was part of a larger collaboration spearheaded by Benji's Hobbies with all of these amazing YouTubers. If you haven't seen the Doomed Company short film already, then it's linked at the end of this video and I'll also leave a link in the description. Let's begin this story at the beginning, shall we? Traditionally, that's the way we begin. I found myself running out of time to deliver a video due to, well, stop motion. It takes forever, obviously, or at least it should have been obvious. I don't think I fully fathomed just, <coughs> just sorry, just how much time it would take. I was in need of a grand setting for my final scene, a dwarven carrack or mine or hall or underground thing. <clears throat> I'm talking to you now. I was already running late, you know, things are like, you know, it's like, oh, you're running late, it's like, nah. So I found these STL files. And I thought, wow, these look amazing and they'll be perfect for a Middle-earth dwarven carrack slash mine. And also, I'm going to be doing a Moria Barlin's Expedition campaign coming up soon, so it'll be perfect for Moria. So it couldn't have been better. And these seem to be from the same designer as the elven terrain that I used on this board. So I knew that this was going to be good stuff. I will, of course, leave a link in the description if you'd like to purchase these STLs for yourself. I'm not sponsored by the designer of these STL files or the seller. I just think they're great. And then I thought, great, okay, let's go. Ah, uh, okay, uh, there is one problem. I don't have an FDM printer. But thankfully, once again, my friend boy came to the rescue and kindly printed me as much as he could in a short amount of time. So thank you, boy, uh, once again for saving me. So at this point, I was ready to get into the crafting stage. Stick around to watch me lose my mind over stop motion later in the video. And of course, for the inevitable crafting disaster. So first thing I needed to do was pull off these fun extra bits. Yeah, come on, baby. So I got my pliers, pulled them off, and of course that activated the cat, and you need to stroke the cat to move on. Then you're gonna have to use your Vallejo putty, which is very nice. I'm liking it to be a temporary fix for these bits that didn't print very well at the top of the pillars. And while I was doing that, of course, I was watching Zorp Zorp making some rad stuff. Then I thought, you know what, let's have a relaxing prime. And I decided to prime these in black so it didn't look any different. And then it decided to rain. Um, so that was hours lost. Great, good times. And now we're using Mechanica Standard Grey to do a Zenithal prime, or at least the start of one. Um, we're gonna go all the way up to white with this one. In the meantime, Boy had printed me a second wave. We have two statues, uh, some walls, a gate, uh, some tiny little hammers, and some bits that will need assembly. A lot of this just slots together, so we're not gonna have to glue all of it together. Uh, maybe at a later time, we can build this into a mountain or a wall or something like that. We've got to clip away the extra bits again using super glue to glue on these hammer bits. Here, I started to dry fit all of the pieces together to get a sense of how it was going to look, but also so that I could Zenithal prime it and have a consistent finish across the build. Slot. And here we glued on the handle to the hammer and used some Vallejo plastic putty to fill the gaps. Now we're going to prime using some more matte black And now Mechanica's standard grey. Obviously priming is really boring, but Harry's made this incredibly interesting with his fantastic dance routines. And now we are ready for a final white Zenithal highlight. And everything is primed and ready for the weathering stage. So we're going to take this wildwood contrast, mix it with some water and start slopping it on across all of the terrain pieces. 
and this is just simulating the general mud and grime of the mine so I want this to work uh, inside and outside because I'll need this to be the outside gate but also work as the inner workings of the mine or carrack. So now we're going to use some Beltan green shade which is a nice wash just to pick up some green bits because a lot of this uh, will also double up for outside so we get that outside. Not as applicable for anything underground but when I'm filming these I'll be doing these in low light so it won't be as noticeable. Now the weird one, Zealot Yellow, and if you've seen this before, it seems strange, it looks horrible at this point, but it will make sense in the next couple of stages. And here it is, the next stage, we're going to use some Vallejo, uh, I think it's Vehicle Wash, uh, it's a nice sort of brown leaning black wash, and um, we're going to put that all over this stuff. And this is what starts to marry that weird leopard spotting together, it starts to unify it, and make it make sense. I look like weathering and not weird camo. So now we're going to use some Wraith Bone uh, and we're going to use a very soft brush. You can use a makeup brush if you want. I got this from the range, which is a sort of, I mean, what is the range? How do you explain the range if you're not from the UK? It's kind of like a big shop full of all sorts of stuff. Tack, as I like to call it. Uh, this one was a couple of quid. And as you can see, it really completes this effect. It creates the feeling of highlights. Having a warm white or, you know, a warm leaning white like this makes it also look like stone. Um, and then, you know, the weathering is subtle and it lies underneath the highlights. I mean, there's many ways you can do this. You know, a lot of people will just do the leopard spotting and, you know, put a wash over the top. That's perfectly acceptable and works particularly well on clays and absorbent materials. And here we go. It's done, ready to build into a set. <sighs> Almost ready to film the scene, I thought. But then, as I was checking over the script, I started to realise something vital was missing. Treasure. I'd put almost no thought into how I was going to make it or where I was going to get it from. And I had to make it that afternoon, there and then, and I was already well over the deadline for the video. So I desperately looked around for something. Coins. Could I just use normal coins? Then it struck me. I was staring at it the whole time because nothing says you mean business like medium ballast. I took this medium ballast out to the shed and sprayed it. You guessed it gold. Make sure that you put it into a container of some kind and mix it around thoroughly as you spray. I'd recommend wearing gloves and of course wear a respirator because this gold spray paint is nasty man. It's not a nasty man, it's just nasty. Man, grammar. Now this will do perfectly for a massive golden treasure hoard. My stepson Harry also lent me some gems from his gem collection, something I think that we should all have. At this point, it was all complete in front of me, done. Now, just for the not so small task of using what I had to create an outside to the mine, an entrance and two different inside sets. I delved deeply into the source material for Dwarven, Carracks and Mines. I kept coming back to Erebor from the Hobbit films. I wanted this kind of feel, but on a smaller scale. Right, let's do that, I thought. But then, of course, I thought, oh, I don't actually have a mountain to set this into. And that's a vital thing for, well, a dwarven carrot because they're built into mountains. If I was going to do this um, from scratch, I would use this PIR foam and I would carve it with a knife uh, to create a rock face and then sort of build that up. And I got this idea from Nat1 Videos and he has an awesome video on the subject and I'll link that in my description. I'll also cover this technique in a future video. Uh, if you'd like me to do that, then please leave a comment below. But what I did have to hand is this ready-made album board and it has rock faces built into it, again, using that PIR foam method. 
and rather than pull out the rock faces because uh, I couldn't use the front bit, I turned it around and put the terrain against it and then used my GW modular board for the foreground landscape. And by using some cinematic lighting and some creative angles, I was able to use this set effectively for the outside. The first haul was a little easier, but I had to make them feel cramped, but also somehow huge. Thankfully, I was able to move the pillars and other extra terrain pieces around in such a way that it did the job perfectly. All is well, I thought. Then I got to this shot and I was thinking again, this is looking good actually, I like the angle, perfect. And then inevitably, disaster struck. It's only me again. Um, yeah, basically, uh, I've just launched a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link in the description. It's got three tiers and the names are pretty fun. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll enjoy all the names eventually. And uh, I offer some extra behind the scenes stuff and early access to videos, and also you get a mention in one of my videos, in every every video, you'll get a mention in every video. You know, uh, it just helps helps me. Um, help me, please, help me. Help me, please. Yeah, let's get back to the video, should we get, yeah, come on. You, why do YouTubers do this with the microphone? I just thought like, you know, all the, all the cool kids are doing it on YouTube now, so I'll get involved. Like, hold a, you know, a lapel mic, like a, like a normal mic. So anyway, as I was saying, I was in the main hall on frame 9 million of this particular scene when this happened. I was not particularly happy with this turn of events. I was tired, I was stressed, and I'd been at this for days at this point. Yeah, sorry, I got hungry as well. That's quite a long story. Yeah, so basically that, um, that wasn't part of the plan. Um, they were quite broken, actually. And, um, mm, so nice. Thankfully, I was able to do some touch-ups. Um, obviously, I didn't film it, it's why you're watching me eating a burger. Glued some bits back on. Um, it was quite painful, to be fair. But right now, the pain of it doesn't seem as close. Now I'm eating the delicious burger and the chips. Um, seems quite far away, actually. So, it's nice doing a retrospective sometimes, you know. Look back at things and, you know, take a bite of a burger and just, just enjoy life, really. So, um, but yeah, the break um, led to some interesting ideas um, like this one. If you go back to the Doomed Company video, you will see in some of the close-ups past that point, they were quite ropey, to be honest. Thankfully, this led to an amusing idea in the edit based on the fact that they were called the Doomed Company. What if they just died, then and there, the end, so I did that. Then I thought obviously I can't just kill them off completely, so Prince of Persia style, I rewound time and gave them an alternative fate. Sorted. For the final scene, I rearranged the set and came up with this cool throne stair thing, arranged the treasure on the statue stands, the key to this was symmetry. I ended up doing a massive battle that took about four hours to finish the stop motion, Throughout this journey, I was able to convince some amazing YouTubers to voice the characters in The Doomed Company, all lending their considerable talents to the roles. All of the takes were so funny to listen to, and they kept me going. Here are some of them. And then eat the jam. I just put some extra words there so it flows better. I don't know what I don't know what a jam is, but you know. Anyway, shove your pointy ears up, you. Jesus, that's an image, isn't it? <laughs> Where'd that come from? Right, um... Oh! I'm leaving these coughs in so you know how much I suffered for my art. I have information... Oh, what the f*** is it called? <laughs> Sorry, Aiden. Uh, what are we calling it? Oh, now Grim's Horde. I wanted you all dead. I thought by sending you on a suicidal side mission, you would all perish as revenge, of course, for it is I, Ethereal. You ruined my 3004th birthday party. You got smashed. <laughs> I shouldn't swear. Ethereal dying sounds in case you end up killing me off. Ah! This terrain will be perfect for the tabletop. Middle Earth strategy battle games, certainly. Any Moria narrative games or anything dwarven within that will be perfect. And also I think this will work really well for D&D settings. 
The Doomed Company themselves I painted way before I started the channel, so I can't show you the full run through of the painting process, but I will say that they were a joy to paint. I will leave a link where you can get them in the description. There's another big collaboration project with JMAX Armies of Middle Earth coming up soon, so ding the bell so you don't miss that. Click here to watch the Doomed Company video, and if you notice any of the things that I mentioned earlier in the video, leave a comment. Thank you, goodbye.